what I feel in. What's good guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be covering part two of our last zoom through transition. You lot really love this video, so I thought I'd make a second part. This time it's a little more complicated. So I've included five assets for free, royalty free, down in the comments for you lot to go check out. So if you wanna create the exact same effect as me, link down below to the Google Drive, just go download it and follow the tutorial. Enough talk, let's just get straight into it. All right, step number one, you need to grab your two clips. Preferably the first one should be zooming out at any point, as you can see in my first clip. It's already zooming out, which will add to the realism of our effect. The, the last one doesn't matter as much, but ideally have one zooming out at the start. Okay guys, now it's time to drag and drop your assets in. I've linked five in the Google Drive down below, so make sure you can just go download them if you want to get the exact same effect as me. Just drag and drop them all in. I'm going to put them for the entire length. Then I can cut them based on where I need to later. So now, what I'm going to do, 3D layer every single one of them. And then also, you need to change your view, okay? So, you may be thinking, what the hell is happening with my view? So all I've done is I've gone to the little view section you'll have on your tab. So here, it will give you a little view section. I've clicked two views, and then from there, you'll have two of these, okay? So it'll be like this, you'll have two of these. So I'll click on the right-hand side one. Then from there, you're going to go on to where it would say active camera and come down to custom view. Now this gives us just an idea of where our camera movement and all the layers are placed. So it makes it a lot easier to see how we're gonna paste the video. Now you're gonna start doing the Z. So go to the bottom clip and make this your final Z, okay? Make this your final Z value. So I'm gonna put it to, I don't know, minus 7,000, okay? It ends up all the way over here. And by the way, it may look stretched over here, but when your camera moves to it, it's completely fine. So it just looks stretched in this view, but there's nothing wrong with it. So now you're going to get all of these and open P. Then from there, you're going to slowly, and I mean slowly, come down in values. So let's say on this one, I'm going to go minus, I don't know, 6,000. Then on this one, I'm going to go minus 5,000. Here we go, minus 4,000. You get the point, right? So this one here, minus 3,000. Go up to the warehouse, minus 2,000. Then over to, that's it. That should be it, right? I'm actually going to switch these around. So empty warehouse actually needs to be at the bottom, just before the warehouse door. So I'm going to set that to 1,000. Okay, minus 1,000. Go back down to the bottom. Let's put this up, I don't know, minus, I don't know, 5,5. Five. Minus 5,500. So now you've kind of got a level of all these different clips. Now we need to animate the camera. Now it's time to add a camera. New camera. Okay. Press OK. Then go on to drop down menu, transform and point of interest and position. Now I want my transition to start when it starts to zoom out. So around here. So I'm bringing the starting point to here. And I want it to be the end point around, let's say, here because I want some transition on this. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a gap just around there. Then I'm gonna use this tool here, the dolly tool, same as the last episode, then slowly drag it out, okay? And you're gonna see a lot of things happening. So you can see all of this, right? As you zoom through, that's completely normal. In fact, that's what we want. So go over here to this here and boom. Now just adjust the position, Z value to your liking. I don't mind leaving a bit of a gap, so I'm gonna leave it around this value here. As you can see, just a tiny bit of a gap, but it really doesn't matter. Now it's time to make adjustments. As you can see, I don't really like the speed of this. So I'm going to first off, get rid of this gap here. So I'm going to go down to this value here. Just around there. So as you can see, there is no gap now. First off, this door could be a lot more centered. So I'm going to use the position keyframes. Don't need to add any keyframes. Just use the position tab, then just bring this in also to where it zooms out do we have any more space not really say around here bring it up a little bit right there that's fine for me now the warehouse doors as well i mean i could bring the size down a little bit because my z value is already set so that's fine by me now the warehouse door So now that I'm finally happy with the pacing, now it's time to move on to the transitions. Now what I need you to do is go through every single one of your clips and make sure the anchor point is in the center of where you are going to be zooming out from. 
I'm not telling you this for no reason. Genuinely, you're going to be saving yourself a lot of hassle. Okay, so for example, this one here, the anchor point is too high up. I'm zooming in from the center of the door. So I'm going to stick it around there. Move the position back down just until it's about right. So now it's time for the rotation. You're going to go back up to your camera layer after fixing all your anchor points. Z rotation from the start of our keyframes. And then as you can see, just about where the last clip starts, I've ended on, let's say, minus 28. And I put it back to zero because I don't want to leave it slanted like this because it's our final clip. So I've just done a slight little revert back to normal. But once we smooth out the camera layer, trust me, it will look so smooth. And you're probably wondering about all these black layers that we left. Don't worry, we're going to be fixing all that too. So now let's fix our clips up. So make sure you're on fit up to 100% for, let's say, this view here. And just so you know, when you go over to these clips here, look for any clips with black lines. For example, these two at the front are completely fine. There's no gaps at all. So go to the ones with the gaps, okay? Let's say the Lambo blue. Then you're gonna add an effect called motion tile, okay? Once you've added motion tile, put the output width to let's say 200 for each, like this, and then put mirror edges. Now, because you're gonna be moving so fast and with all the motion blur, you will not notice any of these details because of how fast it's moving. This is just to fill the space in a very quick way and it does the job. So as you can see, my motion tile is needed again on the G-Wagon layer. So I'm not going to copy it over. I repeat, I am not going to copy it over because watch what that will do. So if I copied it over, it's going to move the entire anchor point because it, they're different size images. Make sure you add motion tile to your new layer. Put it to, let's say, 200, whatever. Now let's move on to the fun stuff. As you can see, we've eliminated all the gaps now after doing the motion tiling. Now, since you're already at an intermediate level, you would know how to mask all of these out. If you don't know how to, highly recommend you you If you don't know how to, I highly recommend you check the other video which I linked at the start. I'm also going to put it above right now. So make sure you go check this out if you want a more in-depth tutorial. This is a follow-on tutorial. So by now, if you're watching this, you should know what you're doing. So next step, you need to mask out everything. So I'm going to be masking out this door here. I'm also going to mask out the warehouse door, then mask out the Lamborghini logo, then mask out the window, then mask out this whole layer of the Ferrari bit, just all of this. And then that should be it for me. Just a quick tip for all of you lot, if you're going to do double doors like me, all I've done is made two different layers with both masks of the door and then copied both of those masks onto the bottom layer. So the bottom layer actually has, if we have a look like it was normally, it actually has both of the layers on them. If you want to make sure this is hollow, all you got to do is go down to both of your masks on the original layer and just subtract them. That's it. Okay? Let me get back to the speed run now. Another quick one, guys. Obviously our clip before for the ferrari at least what i'm doing the full size clip wasn't in there so if you need to you can always scale it down just remember the number it was at okay guys are you starting to see why i told you to name all your layers i've got so you need two versions the inverted and the normal okay now let's move on once you've masked everything now what I need you to do to quickly check everything's working is disable all of your non-inverted layers. So the logo, the window, the bonnet, um, the doors. So all you've got is the outer shells which you also inverted the mask for. So just for a simple one, if you wanted to do some sort of swivel door opening, you'd use the wire rotation and obviously make sure it's on the right point and then swivel it around as you'd like. But... For this effect, I'm just going to be doing a normal slide with the position keyframe because I can't be asked. Let's be real. I just want to make sure this works properly. So all I'm going to do is keyframe, let's say, to start with both of my right doors. I want them to close around here. So put the final keyframe, which is where it stands, around there. And then go to where I want it to start. And then let's say bring the Z value, both of them, just maybe one or two below. So it's 1343 right now. I'm just going to put it to 1340. You're probably wondering why I'm doing that, but you're going to see in a second. So do that. And now individually, let's say find it around there. 
individually just move each one across so you know where they are now you're starting to see why i lowered it so much literally only by two so it's 1342 right now i'm going to 1340 now the main reason i've lowered the z from the starting keyframe to 1340 when the original is 1343 is because of one reason only because if i put these to 1343 like you said or just a little bit above i don't know one three four three as you can see they are on top of the image i don't want them on top of the image okay i want them underneath so i want them to slide from behind the image does that make sense so look you can see they're sliding from behind now just a quick tip but yeah let's move on that's too quick for me again what i'm going to do is bring this across a little bit Again, as an intermediate, you should already know about this type of stuff. Just altering the clips to make sure it's the best way that you like it. Now, as an intermediate, you should already know this type of stuff. Just altering keyframes to the way you like them. So, I found that for me, I like it around there. That's, that's perfect for me. But as you can see, our clip here actually... It's starting to show a black bit. So all you got to do is the exact same thing. Add a motion tile. Do that again. Over 200. Mirror both edges. That's completely fine. Okay, guys. I'm comfortable with how that's looking now. So all I'm going to do is now move on to the warehouse door. So I'm going to have the warehouse door moving from the top and sliding down. So go into your warehouse door layer. Let's see where you want it to end. I want it to end there. So I'm going to put our position keyframe there. Then I'm going to go forward to where I want it to start. And remember, go from 1 or 2 below or 3. So it's minus 2798. Now I'm going to put it to minus 2796. Okay. Then I'm just going to make it go up. Just about there. Is that okay for me? This is not going to be closing for a good few seconds. So you can leave it overlapping a little bit more if you'd like. You can see we're starting to see a little bit more of a gap now. So same thing. Go to your bottom layer, for example, mine's here. Add yourself a little motion tile, then mirror the edges. You know the drill already. So now that's those two finished, as you can see. But now it's time to move on to the Lamborghini logo. I'm going to have it sliding in from the top and through. Just a simple one. So again, position where I want it to finish. Just put the standard keyframe there. Then go back to where you want it to start. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap. I'm not going to start it straight away. So now maybe here, then I'm just going to bring it down from minus three, six, four, five, the Z value to let's say minus three, six, four, three. That's it. Then I'd like to move mine up and down. Oh, bit too much. I'm just going to move mine here and just move it manually just to where I want it. Let's say just around here. Make sure everything's centered up nicely. Now that's what it's looking like there. Remember, this is all going to look a lot smoother than it does right now. I can guarantee you that. It's looking very choppy, but trust the process. Now for the past two, I've had them sliding from the top down. So I'm going to do a little bit different with the G-Wagon. I'm going to have it going in from the side over here. That's completely fine with me. So let me just do that real quick. Okay, so after doing all the keyframes, this is what we now got, guys. I'm happy with the movements, but it's really looking choppy right now. So here is the next step. Grab all of these, F9, okay? So that's immediately going to make a difference with the smoothness of everything. And then, one more thing, you lot already know, motion blur. So instantly it's looking smoother. However, now we've got these little gaps here. So all you're going to do for each clip, for example, this window layer, I'm just going to go to the G-Wagon window and just size it up until it covers the gap it needs to cover. Remember, these are really, really, really simple layers. You're not going to notice anyway. So I'm just going to close all of these gaps until it's no longer visible. Oh. So you lot do the same for your clips. Just keep closing them until it's no longer visible. Okay, guys, now after sizing everything up after those little gaps left, this is what we now got. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. However, however, I still think it's a bit too slow. So I'm going to grab this layer here and then go into the U with this. So click this and highlight those. 
And I'm just going to bring them forward a little bit because I feel it's still a bit too slow on my end, me personally. So you lot, this is a good learning experience for you lot. I've decided that now nah, my clip is way too slow. So I've just moved these camera keyframes and now, while it is faster and I like the pace better, now everything is out of sync, as you can see. Now the door just drops there and the logo of the Lambo only starts to close when the G-Wagon comes in. So it's just a real simple fix. All you gotta do is open up all of your layers again that you've been keyframing, for example, with these. I'm fine with the doors being like that, but let's, for example, say the Lambo logo. If I wanted to finish a bit earlier, I just go back onto the Lambo logo and simply move the keyframes in a little bit. That's it. So now, guys, I want you to get all of your camera layer keyframes and F9 every single one of them, okay? So highlight them all and press F9. Now, you may see a little few differences in your clip. That's completely fine. All you've got to do now is just readjust the keyframes again. And then that's it. Hey, you lot. After enabling motion blur on all of these and simply adjusting all the keyframes. And what I mean by adjusting is I had to move this camera layer because I felt it was too slow. So I moved all these keyframes forward. And simply, if you remember all of our logo kind of little keyframes we did earlier, all I did was shift them forward. So we've already done all the work for that. It's looking absolutely crazy. However, now we just need to do the last transition. I'm just going to be using a simple vertical hit from the same pack just to kind of tie everything together. Nothing too flashy. Now let's have a look at it. If you want to use the same shake I used at the end, it's down in the description below. Make sure you go check it out. Enough talk. Hope you have a good day or night. Either way, doesn't matter. See you later.